Uh, good morning, Orville Baptist Church. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so glad you're with us tonight. The snow didn't keep you at home. Uh, that's good. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started then, and we're going to begin by singing uh, Praise Him, Praise Him. church. It is so good to have you here. It's a little warmer today, not as warm as it could be, but uh, if you hold on to the end of the week, they're promising warmer weather. We're so glad you're here today. I uh, wanted to be able to start out with a couple of praises, and I hope that our time is extended in praise, because I want you to think about what praise you have for going through 21 days of prayer. Today is the last day, and if you've made that, that's a wonderful thing. If you read today's, I think that's a wonderful thing. Uh, and uh, so think about that. I want to start, though, with a good praise, and that is last Sunday night, and I would love to be able to show you the pictures that aren't here right now for some reason. Uh, last Sunday night, we had the ordination service of Pastor Gary Dehart, and this room was full of African-American brothers and sisters. And it was wonderful. Dave and Linda Santmar were there. Vivian was there. Um, I don't know if anybody else from the church was there. But we had a glorious time. And please don't, please don't think I preach long. Their service started at, uh, at 3.30, and we left the building, and there were still people here at 6.30. Uh, <clears throat> now, the service was over. I didn't leave in the middle, okay? Uh, the service was over. It was a grand time. And I tell you what, I felt as comfortable with them that night as I do with you this morning. And praise the Lord for that. And so um, I wanted to share uh, just a blessing uh, that uh, we had pastors that were on the stage up here. I think there were five or six of us uh, that took part in the service. I was the only one of our, our uh, color, which is wonderful. I mean, it's good to be able to see pastors from other churches that love the Lord and are sharing his, um, his message. 
and spending the evening ordaining Brother Gary and, uh, and blessing him and Nikki as well. I will say that the, the mayor of Orville was here and all uh, new mayor there's only 14 days into his uh, his administration I said uh, mayor is this the first proclamation that you've made and uh, he because he had a big framed proclamation that he was going to read I said he said yeah this is my first one and uh, but he did a great job he was here and um, Paul Vance the the president of city council was here and uh, Dave was a friend of the new mayor's, and uh, so I was talking to the mayor after it was over, and, uh, and he said that he had ran track with Dave. And uh, one of the testimonies, that was a long time ago, yeah. <laughs> so I said, I was just kidding, Dave, because we weren't talking about this. I said, Dave, uh, the mayor says that he knows all about you, and uh, he didn't tell me one thing about Dave, <laughs> but he said he knows all about you, and Dave... Being the great brother that he is, said, I am a new man now. And uh, so what a testimony to, uh, to our officials and to those that were here. Dave, you got something? Linda, you got something that you want to add yeah, to that? Yeah, thing that stuck with me when the last thing Gary said was there was, what, 10 different churches mm -hmm. represented in our little church here? And he said the one thing that churches need to do today is get... Just don't get to know the people. You got to know the people to be able to pray for. Them. Yeah. We can know who everybody is in our sanctuary, but if you really don't know the person, you don't really know what to pray for. Yes. Yeah. He said that's what we all, all the churches have to, you know, be able to do. Yes. Linda, anything to share? No. All right. <laughs> Well, that's a good transition, Dave. Thank you for that. Because when you know this God, as opposed to really know this God, prayer makes all the difference in the world. And so maybe you have a testimony of what God has done or maybe has done in your, uh, in your 21 days to enhance your prayer time, to answer a prayer, to be able to uh, just draw you closer. So I am expecting many people to be able to share something. So who's going to be first? Linda, all right. I just want to say I've really been enjoying the 21 days of prayer, and one thing I've really gotten out of it, it's brought us a lot closer Amen. because we're doing it together. Amen. Whereas before, he did his, I did mine but we're doing this one together. So. Amen. Amen. All right. Somebody, there's Whitney. Um, like Linda, I've really been, I've really enjoyed the study. I'm a few days behind because we were sick and, you know, all the things. But there's been a lot of changes that I felt God has led us to make within our home over the course of reading this book. Um, some of it was just things with, like, the boys and, like, decor choices like the games that they play that they were really super into we've done a lot of like limiting them um which have been it's been really 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 cool um to see them the boys come together and play together and spend time together more um i've had a prayer that we say every night since the boys were little and i kind of stopped saying that and kind of it changed it to tailor our prayers at net bedtime to reflect whatever's going on in our day or our lives um Something really cool happened. Grayson woke up yesterday morning and came in. He says, Mom, I was getting a little scared before I went to sleep. He said, and I prayed. He said, I prayed that Jesus would fill my heart with love and peace. And he said, and I was able to go to sleep. He goes, and I even prayed for health for everybody to feel better. And I prayed for Nana. He said, I just really want Nana to feel better. And so I thought it was really cool that this little seven-year-old, and while we haven't necessarily talked about how we are changing our prayers, he is feeling it, and he yeah. is partaking in it, and I just thought that was really, really cool. Great, great. Somebody else? Kevin King. Yeah, I'd like to say the 21 days of prayer I've been working on, and in the 21 days of this year so far, I've gone through a lot of tests and turmoils, um, the passing of my father, 
um, some work issues, COVID and so forth. It seems like of all the 21 uh, prayers, I was able to use almost every one these last 21 days and it's definitely helped me get through um, these tests and trials that I've had. And uh, I just only wanna praise the Lord, this church, and the pastor for guiding us in the right direction. All right, thank you, Kevin. Somebody else. Yes, um, going through this um, touched me in many ways. Uh, it made me realize some of the things I had literally taken for granted that I really needed to ask the Lord about. Specifically, I generally pray for other people. I don't pray for myself, but I learned through that it's okay to pray for yourself. And uh, it made quite a bit of difference in my outlook on everything. Yeah. But yeah, it was pretty awesome. Thank you, Pauline. Somebody else? All right. Well, personally, it's been a time when I think I have not focused as much on prayer uh, than I have in the last 21 days. I spent more time praying in the last 21 days, whether it's the first thing in the morning when I got up with my usual quiet time or at noon hour when I was here or at other times when I just sensed, hey, this is what I, this is what I learned. And it was interesting, too, that some of the prayers were uh, ones that, uh, that I came to as like I kind of thought the same thing. And uh, you'll see more about that maybe in just a little bit. But I was so privileged to be able to pray for your prayer request. And if they haven't been answered yet, and I know some of them were time sensitive, some of them probably have been answered, and I don't know how they've been answered. But if you, uh, you want to share with me, that's great. I had somebody share last week that when we ask you to put down three to seven things to pray for one of theirs was answered within five hours of them writing it down and so i i know god answers prayer and uh and i'm just expecting him to answer your prayer request that i've been praying for it's interesting on friday the last day i was going monday through friday for for the past three weeks praying over your cards i couldn't find them friday I don't know where they're at even to the day where they're at. I've looked everywhere that I thought they might be, couldn't find them. But because I had prayed so often, I was able to come up with 25 of the 29 just from memory, just to be able to pray. And I asked the Lord to let me find those others so I could find and pray for those uh, one last time. So I'm assuming those are going to turn up somewhere, and, uh, and I will continue to pray as you have asked me to do. And thank you for that. So let's go to the Lord now. Father, our minds can't quite comprehend a God who is so powerful and so mighty and so holy and so much bigger than we are. who would invite us to come and to pray with you. And not only an invitation, but an invitation that came at a high cost. It came at a cost of your son, Jesus Christ. And because of his sacrifice, you have made a way that we could come and seek your face and to be able to pray to you and to learn and to love and to know you like we know our spouses, our good friends, and to, Lord, seek you in times all through the day, in times when we, we are in great need, in times when we are rejoicing. Father, I thank you for the time that we've had, and I pray uh, that it will not end. 
I pray, Lord, this is just the beginning of what you have in store for us. And Father, everything that we will do will be built upon prayer because that is the power to do the work that you've called us to do. Father, I thank you for these who are here, and I know even from speaking to some this morning that they are not here because they're ill, and I pray, Lord, your blessing upon them. There are people who are at home today and not feeling well, and I just ask, Lord, your healing hand would be upon them. Thank you, Lord, for all that are watching, and thank you all for all those are, who uh, are not able to be with us. May your grace be theirs today. Lead us in a fantastic way today. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand with us as we sing, Come Thou Found, Come Thou King.
a mighty rushing wind And it's closer now Than it's ever been I can almost hear the trumpet as Gabriel sounds the chord at the midnight cry we'll be going home when Jesus steps out on a cloud to call his children shall rise to meet him in the air and then those that remain will be quickly changed at the midnight When Jesus comes again. I look around me I see prophecies fulfilling And the signs of the times they're appearing everywhere I can almost hear the father as he says son go get your children and at the midnight cry the bride of Christ will rise when Jesus steps out on a cloud to call his children. The dead in Christ shall rise. Jesus comes again, and then those that remain will then be quickly changed at the midnight crowd when Jesus comes again. At the midnight cry, when Jesus comes again, when Jesus comes again. Thank you, Andrew. Won't you stand with us as we sing? Offering. Thank you. 
Praise team. Thank you, Andrew, for that special music. If you have your scripture, turn with me, if you would, to Acts chapter 10. When God answers prayer, I want you to nudge the person next to you and say, stay awake this morning. All right. Now, because you have warned them, <sighs> the next time, don't nudge them, but give them a swift elbow dusting to the ribs, okay? And if you do it just right, you'll hear a gasp, okay? And that gasp will let all the rest of us know two things. One, you were asleep, and two, you're awake. <laughs> We're talking about prayer this morning. Praying so that God answers our prayer. And what happens when he does answer our prayer? It is a little different passage of scripture. It's one that um, I wouldn't have come to if the Lord hadn't directed me to it. It's interesting uh, how that has happened more often than not uh, in this series. There's an old expression that says, God helps those who help themselves. And that is not only unbiblical, it is not true. It is not God's desire that we try and help ourselves because that diminishes the power of prayer. If we can do it, there is no need to pray. In fact, just the opposite. What you think about the real power of prayer is that it is not coming from a person who believes they can help themselves, but from a person who knows they can't. That's what we talked about in the first week. We saw a boy with a lunch and maybe seven to 10,000 people out there with five loaves and two fishes. And Jesus looks at his disciples and said, you give them something to eat. And their response was, we can't. And we concluded that's exactly right. And that's why we come to the Lord in prayer. Lord, help us because we can't. And the sooner we get to that place, the better. 
because then we are dependent upon God. You see, sometimes we live our lives as though we're not dependent upon him. In those times when we think we're not dependent upon him, we're actually fooling ourselves at that moment. The second week we looked at was last week, and we looked about a, um, a tax collector who taught us how to pray to be humble before God. Lord, have mercy upon me, a sinner. Would not even look to heaven, but bowed his head and spoke those five words. Lord, have mercy. Seven words. Lord, have mercy upon me. A sinner. Today we're going to say, what happens if we come and we ask the Lord, Lord, I can't, and so I'm bringing my dependency upon you. Even to the simple thing of, give us this day our daily bread. You might think, I've got all kinds of food in my cupboards and in my freezer. And that could be gone like that if it wasn't for the grace of God. I can't, Lord, but I pray and depend upon you for everything in this day and to be able to come humbly. The Lord knows our hearts, so we should not come with a, a proudness of a Pharisee, but we should come with the humility of a tax collector. Lord, have mercy. That's what I need is your mercy. And then today, when the Lord answers prayers, what do we know? So, let's look at a passage of scripture which involves a, an apostle by the name of Peter. You know him as the one who denied Christ three times before he died. You also know him as the one who spoke and preached a message at Pentecost. And 3,000 people gave their hearts to the Lord and were baptized that day. So we have extremes that are here. And Peter is going to be used by God yet another time to be the answer to someone's prayer. So let's stand as we reverence the reading of God's word. And in verse 1, at Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion, in what was known as the Italian Regiment. He and all his family were devout and God-fearing. He gave generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. One day, at about three in the afternoon, he had a vision. His, he distinctly saw an angel of God who came to him and said, Cornelius. And Cornelius stared at him in fear. What is it, Lord? He asked. And the angel answered, Your prayers and gifts to the poor have come up as a memorial offering before God. Now send men to Joppa to bring back a man named Simon who is called Peter. He is staying, at Simon, uh, staying with Simon the tanner whose house is by the sea. And when the angel who had spoke to him had gone, Cornelius called two of his servants and a devout soldier who was one of his, of his attendants. And he told them everything that had happened and sent them to Joppa. You may be seated. This morning, I would like for us to, to look and to be able to see the things that God does when he answers prayer. When God answers prayer, first, someone prayed. God desires that we come to him and to seek him. And if you and I do not have answered prayer, it could be that we have not because we ask not. Someone had this quote, prayer is the appointed means for obtaining what we need. Pray, pray often, make a business of prayer and be serious and earnest in it. Ask as a beggar ask, 
Ask as a traveler, a traveler, ask the way, and seek as for the thing of value that you have lost. We need to be people that are coming to him and praying. We have spent 21 days, 21 days in prayer. And when God answers prayer, it is because someone has prayed. In this case, it was Cornelius. In your case, it's your 21 days of prayer. Why 21? A couple of reasons. One, 21 days or three weeks is what they say is needed to develop a good habit. If you can do something for 21 days, you're pretty much in the habit of doing it. So continue in what you are doing. But also, if you go back in Scripture, you will see the time in which God answered a prayer at the moment it was prayed, but Satan held up the answer for 21 days. God answered the moment in which he prayed, but for 21 days, there was a battle going on in the heavenlies, and the answer did not come for 21 days. Can I tell you, you may be one day away from praying what God is going to answer. Don't give up now. God wants to answer your prayers. So Cornelius gets a vision. Don't get mixed up about that. I have not had a vision before. I've talked to people that I trust that have. But in the most part, God doesn't speak to me in visions. He speaks to me through his word. And that word will come off from time to time, and I will know that I am in the presence of God because I hear him speaking to me in that passage. And it is divine. It is one of those things that is like, wow, I had a great time with the Lord today. So he has a vision. And the vision is that he is to get a hold of Peter. He is supposed to send some people to get Peter and to bring them back to his house. Now, the scripture doesn't say whether or not he knew Peter at all. In fact, it kind of alludes that he doesn't. Go and get Simon, who is also called Peter. It's interesting in this passage that there's a second thing that happened is, is that Cornelius obeys. When God answers, not only someone prays, but someone obeys. It says that he got two of his servants and a devout soldier. This was so important, it could not not happen. I have to get this man called Peter to come to me. I have seen a vision of God. I have spoken to God's servant, an angel, and there is indeed a, a message for me to get, so I must get this one who is to come. And it was so important that he did exactly what he was told. Notice the specifics. Go and look for a man in a specific city of Joppa. Go and look for a specific man, Simon, who is also called Peter. Also go to a specific place. He is staying at Simon's house down by the sea. Oh, not just Simon down by the sea, but Simon, who is a tanner down by the sea. See how specific God is? God wants us to know when he speaks to us. And in fact, you will always know when God speaks to you. You will know that it is God who is speaking. 
and he desires to speak to people who want to listen, who are desiring to come and to hear him. And when God answers prayer, you won't have to know if it is him or not. You will know. And you will not have to know what his message is because you will know. He will make it known. You will know it is God and you will know what he is calling you to do. Sometimes it does come as a nudge. Sometimes it comes as a rib duster and you know exactly and you know at that point what God is wanting you to do. Notice what wasn't in this. Well, first of all, let me, let me say this. God doesn't speak to me like that, you might say. And if he doesn't, maybe you should speak with him more often. Because God wants to use you as he has used Cornelius. Cornelius, I've got something for you to do. And this passage says in verse 7, And when the angel who had spoke to him had gone, Cornelius called two of his servants and a devout soldier who was one of his attendants. It is immediate when the angel was gone he called them when the angel was gone he sends them out God uses all kinds of people to be able to answer the work that he wants to do in you some of you on the prayer cards ask for healing and God uses doctors sometimes to make that happen. Sometimes God uses pastors to make that happen. In this case, he's going to use Peter to be able to answer this prayer. And sometimes he's wanting to use you, just like he is using Cornelius. Cornelius was a man who was devout he was not a Jew. He was not a Christian, we believe, but he was a, a devout, fearful man of God. He prayed to him regularly, and God heard his prayer and saw his goodness to those who were poor, and he saw the heart that was in him, and he speaks to him, and he's going to use them. Point number three. When you have God answer prayer, someone prayed, someone obeyed, and someone received. Let me tell you a little bit about the story from here on out because it gets rather lengthy and our time is short. So, he sends out these three to go find Peter in Joppa. The scripture says, at noon the following day, they were on their journey and approaching the city. The following day, they got up, they left, they, they went to Joppa to find Peter. They're approaching the city, and God speaks to Peter while Peter is praying. And he does so in a vision. And it's an interesting vision that we really would be well to be able to understand, but maybe for another time. But what happens is that God gives this vision to Peter of a sheet coming down with all kinds of unclean animals on it, unclean birds, unclean animals, things that Peter would not eat on his kosher diet. And the voice comes to Peter and says, take kill and eat and Peter responds surely not Lord nothing impure or unclean has ever entered my mouth 
it's interesting that uh, that Peter is saying no to the Lord again. Remember the time when Jesus was going to say, I'm going to the cross and they're going to do this to me. They're going to persecute me. They're going to kill me and I'm going to raise on the third day. And Peter says, no, not so, Lord. That's not going to happen. And he said to him at that moment, and you would have thought he would have learned, get thee behind me, Satan. But here he is saying again, no, I'm not going to do that. It happens not once, not twice, but three times that he is instructed to eat. Peter then gets word that there's some men that are at the door. They are coming to look for him. And when he goes to the door, he is supposed to go with them. And so he does. And he goes back to Cornelius' house and there Cornelius has with him all his family and all his friends because they want to hear what God has for them. So turn with me if you would to the scripture and we'll go down to verse 34. And then Peter began to speak. I realize how true it is that God uh, does not show favoritism, but he accepts men from every nation who fear him and do what is right. Peter came to the realization this is not about food, this is about men. Verse 36, you know the message God sent to the people of Israel telling the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all? You know what has happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, and how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. And then he gets to the point. 39. We are witnesses to everything that Jesus did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all people, but by the witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed to judge the living and the dead. And all the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Let's stop right there. Because something amazing is about to happen. Someone is going to receive something that they had not had. And it all happened because Peter shares the gospel with them. Eight sentences. Two paragraphs in your Bible. He explains that this Jesus has come from God and this Jesus who has done good in healing and bringing forth the goodness has been killed and hung on a tree. And three days later, he arose from the grave. And we are testifying that he is alive, and that we have seen him, and that we have eaten with him. There is a great need for what Peter shared with the people in a room called by God to speak. And here's what happened. Verse 44, while Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come, who had come with Peter were astonished and the, uh, that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. What happened in a moment 
was that they received the forgiveness of their sins that Peter had told them about. And in a moment, they had received the Spirit of God as a deposit of what is to come. And God did all that by using Cornelius, who was praying. I will say that the cards I prayed over came in about four different categories, four different broad categories. One category was some, by, some people asked me to pray about their finances. And I understand that. There is a need to be dependent upon God, but it could be that God is also doing a work that you can't see, but is also calling you to be able to be a part of it. So maybe a part of the answer to the financial situation that someone has is that you be able to increase your income, find a, another position, find a side hustle that they call. Maybe you do, as some have done, and deliver pizzas. Maybe you babysit. Maybe you tutor. Maybe you have the gift of being able to do crafts and you can sell those at a profit. God wants to use you to be able to help answer your gift. I pray that there is someone who comes and, and just opens the floodgates of heaven and it pours them out on you. He has promised that if we honor him with our, with our finances, that he will honor us, and so we can expect that. But in my 63 years, I have not had anybody that's dropped great $100,000 in my lap and said, hey, I'm going to take care of all your financial problems the rest of your life. Praise God if you have. Sometimes he wants us to be a part of what he is doing. Second big category that people had was healing. They prayed for healing. And the way in which that we can take part in that is that we can pray. James chapter 5 says the prayers of faith are powerful and effective. God uses doctors, he does. God uses pastors to pray over people, and he does. But God can use you to be able to pray and, and to be able to pray with faith that this is going to happen. I'm expecting some of the prayers that I have done to be answered in a miraculous way. And if they are answered in a miraculous way, you're going to know about it. I'll just let you know that. Some have prayed for relationship issues. They're distant from these people in their family. They're distant from these people in their family. There's a separation somehow that's there. And God can build that back together. But he may want to use you who has that prayer to be able to do it. It could be that God wants to use you to be able to take that step of faith. You say, no, I've tried that before and it didn't work out. I'm sorry. God doesn't say, I'm going to call them to do it and they need to realize that they didn't do it before so they're probably not going to do it again. No, if God speaks to you and tells you to do something, then you do it. It's apparent that Cornelius was praying, but he really didn't know the message. He just knew, I got to get ready for this message that God is going to give me through somebody of the name of Peter who is going to come back and talk to my, to my friends and my family. So it could be that you write a letter. It could be that you get a third party involved. It could be that you go to the door and just ask, for forgiveness you say preacher you don't know I'm not the one who needs to be forgiven yes you are anytime that there is a, 
a difference between people for a long period of time, what you have thought about that situation, what you have thought about that person, what you have put in your mind is something that needs to be forgiven and it needs to be put aside and God wants to do it and he maybe want to do it through you. We need to listen. We need to hear, God, what is it that you want me to do? The biggest category of all was will you pray for my lost ones in my family? And you know, that gave me great joy to be able to pray for them because many of them I knew by name. Even though they didn't put a name down, I knew who they were. Some did. I prayed for a lot of initials. I asked you to put initials down. So I prayed for somebody named P and somebody named M, D, M, D, H. All of those people, I prayed for husbands to be saved and wives to be brought to Christ. I prayed for children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren to come to Christ. And I'm just saying today, it could be that God is calling you to be the helper in the answer to your prayer. Could God be using you to be able to speak in a loving way to your spouse? And if not, then get the invite for me to come over and I will help. Because you and I know the answer to the problem that they need. You and I know that there is a Christ who has died for them and the biggest problem in their life is not their finances, not their separation from somebody else, and it's not a need for healing. The biggest problem in their life is that they have sin that one day is going to be paid for or one day prior to that is going to be forgiven. And Christ wants them to be forgiven. The last one is this. When it happens, someone rejoices. Think a moment about your prayers. The prayer that you have been praying, the prayer that you asked me to pray, think about whether or not that will be answered, and if so, what will your reaction be? The reaction from these people were astonishing. The Holy Spirit came upon them and poured out even upon these who are Gentiles. What you need to know is that Gentiles and Jews really hated one another. And the reason that Peter is saying, no, I can't eat anything unclean is because Gentiles were unclean in Jews' eyes. A Jew would never allow a Gentile to stay in his house. Never. If they, these men would have come to Peter's house or to Simon the Tanner's house, Peter would have said, okay, I'll go with you, but you go down the street and stay somewhere else. You can't stay here. And Peter would have never gone into Cornelius' house because Cornelius was a Gentile, and Gentiles and Jews just didn't mix. But they did. And then Peter says in verse 47, can anyone keep these people from being baptized with water? They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And then they asked Peter to stay with them a few more days. While God may be using other people, he may be using you. And in using you, he may be bringing praise that you're looking for, rejoicing that you're looking for. In this book, I think it was yesterday, making it personal. Personal. We are the key to the answer of some of our prayers. We are the key to the answer of some of our prayers. 
And I thought about that and I thought, oh my goodness, Lord, I've already thought that, I already wrote that, and here you are affirming that. That we are the keys to some of our answers. He may be using you. He may be using me. He may be using Peter. He may have used Cornelius. He could be using us. One of the prayers of someone told me was that they have been praying that three people in this congregation would give their lives to the Lord during this 21 days and three people would join the church. They have prayed that for 21 days, that three people would come to know this Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior. And that their sins would be forgiven and their, their road from there on would be in heaven moving in the right direction. So when Andrew sings at the midnight call, when the trumpets sound, you are going with all those who are called. When the trumpet sounds, you will rise, you will ascend, you will go. And three people who would know this is where God has put me. And for as long as I am here, I want to be not just a person who sits in a pew. I want to be a working member, investing in the lives of other people, being used as God has gifted me to be able to build up his kingdom and to build up his church. Some could make that happen today. Some could leave here rejoicing at what God has done. Let me pray. Will you bow your heads with me? Father, maybe you're nudging someone even right now. Maybe it's a little harder than a nudge. Maybe you've spoken to someone and allowed us to see as Cornelius did that we can trust you even when we don't know what the outcome is because you are calling us to do it. Give us the faith to be able to step out and to do what you're calling us to do even yet this moment. It is only for your glory, Lord. We're dependent upon you and we are only as good as our humility before you because it is then that you answer our prayer. Father, in this time of invitation, if there's some that need to make a decision for you, I pray that they would not delay. They would come and we'll give glory to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Will you stand and will you come?
21 days is not a beginning and an end. 21 days is a beginning and a continuing. So I hope, as some have told me, I want to go back through this book again. I want to read it all over again. And this time to be able to read it knowing what God has uh, already asked me to do and to be able to do it maybe a little better than I did the first time through it. I have heard people text me and send me things uh, that you haven't heard, and I'm sorry for that. Uh, but um, I trust that God is going to meet you when you desire to meet with him. Okay? Second thing is this. We have some announcements to be able to make. There is a, uh, a time in which we're going to have a marriage dinner. It's called lasagna, love and lasagna. Uh, and uh, you have an opportunity to be a part of that. It's from uh, 6 to 8 p.m. on February 9th. And uh, it's going to be at the Blackberry Clubhouse over, over in the Blackberry Condominiums. And it's real easy to find. Uh, chaplain uh, from the Wayne County Sheriff's Office, Kurt Stauffer, is going to be sharing a word with, uh, with us. So I encourage you to be there. Let me just say this. We have a few extra openings, okay? We're looking for 25 different couples. And so I want to use this as an outreach if there's someone that you know that is not plugged into a church somewhere, but might be if you invited them, this is a great place to be able to invite them. You might even spend $14 to invite them and not even charge them. That'd be all right. And, uh, and I'll just say, if you invite them, I'll pay the $14, okay? That's how much I want you to invite them. So let me know if I owe 14 more dollars. Um, but that's a good way to be able to reach out and to invite somebody that, that you want to come and to be a part of what God's doing here. And uh, first, you need to be able to come, so sign up uh, and get your name on the sheet out there. I think we're, we are maxed out at 25 couples, so uh, that's one. Second is, I think they had a great time yesterday. Pauline, you have a great time yesterday at, women, at Wings? All right, wonderful. Um, and then um, Vivian had a birthday party here. Absolutely. Yes. We have some one year old. All right. Already. All right. Wonderful. Um, Bible studies are resuming, and they are uh, at nine o'clock in the morning here at in the generations class, and then seven o'clock in the evening for for Pastor Gary and uh, and that Bible study. So, other announcements that need to be made. Did I get them all? All right. Kevin King, great job getting the sidewalks and the parking lot looking good. Did a wonderful job. Thank you for that. All right. Thank you so much for being here. Let's be close in a word of prayer. Almighty God, we thank you and we praise you for each one who is here today. May your blessing be upon them as they go. Keep them safe, Lord. But more importantly, keep us close. Let us, Lord, find shelter in your wings. Let us find a refuge in you. Let us find a hope that, uh, that we need in this world. And Father, let us find time to draw ourselves away from the world and draw ourselves to you. Father, I thank you for, for the time that we've had. I thank you, Lord, for the truth of your word. And may it go out, Lord, even as we walk from this place, may we carry the truth of your word, that it changes lives one person at a time. Thank you. In the powerful name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.